It's summertime, and the project team is living in similar conditions to those of the people that they are studying. It's amazing to think that they cooked using stones, just like in the Neolithic period. The only thing that was different is that at the time there were no metal containers and they cooked in a pouch made out of goat skin. Their saucepans were made out of goat skin. After two weeks of grueling excavation, the archaeologists have almost reached the first tomb. The burial chamber is only a few centimeters beneath their feet, and the tension is palpable. Is the tomb still frozen? It's hollow. This is the burial chamber. Ice. Excellent, real ice. We've removed all the protective layers of soil. If we don't work quickly, the ice will melt and the organic components will dissolve. It's a race against the clock. It's imperative that we close it up again as quickly as possible. <laughs> We must call Ulan Bato immediately. If we found a tomb with, uh, with ice, you must start immediately what? with a frigorific uh, truck. Day and night. So quick as, police, as possible. And uh, drive in the night also. Drive in the night. The work has been suspended. Excavation exposes organic matter to a sudden change in temperature and can cause decomposition. The archaeologists have to wait for a refrigerated truck. Tension is mounting. Well, the best case scenario is that the ice has been there since the burial. If this is the case, we'll be able to examine the body and the gene structure and make a paleopathological diagnosis. We would be able to find out what they died of. It looks like the tomb has been frozen. We'll soon find out. Day three. The refrigerated truck still hasn't arrived. Professor Turbat is impatient and investigating some information that was given to him by a Kazakh shepherd. He has been directed to the site of some rock carvings in a cliff face a few hundred meters from the Sergal burial site. These carvings are known as petroglyphs. Before writing, these symbols were the main form of expression for the people living on the steppe. La period bronze. The Bronze Age and the Pazaric era. An extraordinary artistic dialogue has been carved into the cliff face. Over a thousand years after the Bronze Age, the Scythian use of animal art clearly had a significant role to play in terms of communication. This is a horseman in the Pazaric period. He's riding without stirrups. The archaeologists are fascinated by the animal art. It is one of our main resources of information about these populations. We don't have any written records, but we have these representations. Their function is not just aesthetic. They communicate concepts, ideas and myths. We can deduce from these carvings that the civilization at this time was remarkably developed and sophisticated. After four days of endless waiting, 
the refrigerated truck finally appears over the horizon. The excavations immediately start again. Due to global warming, these are the last frozen tombs on the planet. The last frozen tombs on the planet. This burial chamber was starting to melt. We hope that we're going to find bodies between the ceiling and the floor that have been preserved by the ice. We'll know within an hour or two. The Scythian burial chambers were constructed in the same way as they built their winter shelters. The huts are made of larch wood. It is capable of withstanding the rigors of the climate in the region. However, it has been covered in earth for the last millennia, and the wooden ceiling has become fragile over time and is starting to collapse. The archaeologists are losing hope. I think it's hollow. But maybe I'll be disappointed. Can you see any ice? There's some ice, but not much. Well, we were hoping to find ice in this tomb, but there is only a small amount. It's still exciting because it is the first time that we've found a burial chamber that's completely intact. Apart from the ceiling, it has collapsed and this is causing problems. But all four sides of the hut have been preserved. And this is a first in Mongolia. Their disappointment quickly evaporates because despite being partially collapsed, the burial chamber contains some remarkable treasures. This is a large wooden tray. It could be restored. This tray has removable feet. It is a perfect example of Scythian craft. It has been adapted for a nomadic lifestyle. The Scythians were masters in making tools out of larch wood. It's difficult to carve, but it's very sturdy. These wooden artifacts have survived for over 2,000 years and have escaped putrefaction. They are extremely valuable. The Scythian objects were often gold-plated. They were extremely skilled goldsmiths. Gold was either made into sheets or scattered like petals on the floor of the burial chamber. This precious metal was very significant to them. Altai means golden mountain in Mongolian. Gold is unalterable and is considered a noble metal form. Many people believe that it has symbolic links to the sun. We know that this was the case for the European Scythians because according to the legend, the origin of the Scythians involves blazing gold falling from the sky. For the Scythians, gold symbolizes the power of the sun. They considered it to be metal of the sun. This is also the case in other cultures, such as the pre-Columbian civilizations where gold was reserved for royals and the aristocracy. Et à ce titre, réservé au clan royal et à la haute aristocratie. Ces deux loups. He wore these two wolves on either side of his neck. The wolf has two heads side by side. It's extraordinary. We can make out its head, its mouth, its teeth, its ears, and its neck. The gold leaf that covered it has become detached from the wood. Yesterday started with wolves howling throughout the night and we saw them again during the day. The hunters pursued them and now we've found symbolic wolves. 